about this country. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We're in the South. It's all right. All right. <laughs> I'll go first time, I'll just do that. <laughs> uh, I know we have some guests here. Welcome guests. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am, uh, my name is Stephen Old. I'm the children's pastor uh, here at Believers Fellowship. And a few, about a month ago, Dr. Nelson said, oh, at one of our staff retreat meetings, he said, oh yeah, by the way, you're preaching on the 17th. I'm like, really? <laughs> no, I love how he does. He, he, you know, it's been a couple of times I got to preach, and he, he likes to do that. He likes just to say, "Oh yeah, by the way." <laughs> and so, but it's it's been a privilege um, and, a, and an honor for uh, Dr. Nelson to, to share the, the pulpit. And uh, he was a former professor uh, that I had when I was at Union, uh, studying my graduate degree, uh, and uh, very. Feel very privileged to be able to come and uh, spend time with you and, and just look into the work. Um, and so, let's. Uh, I like to open in prayer. And we'll just have to, let's just open prayer. Lord, we come before you, and Lord, we're just so unworthy. Lord, the uh, uh, on the drive here, the the the, uh, the warmth of the sun just reminds us that that. Lord, in a cold world that we live in, that, that, that there, is, there is warmth, and there is warmth in your love, and there is warmth that, that you provide us. And Lord, just forgive us for not, for taking those small little blessings that you give us, you know, the, the sun coming out and, and warming up our earth. And, and Lord, just, just forgive us for taking those small little insignificant things for granted. Lord, Lord we come before you, and Lord... Um, our hearts are heavy, <coughs> and Lord, uh, I just pray that uh, the next few minutes, as we as we look into Your Word, you just help us uh, just leave all distractions uh, out there. Uh, Lord, just just help us just to kind of lay those aside. Just just take a break from those. They've been wearing us down all all day, all week, anyways. We need a break. Lord, just help us to to give ourselves a break so we can meet with You here in this place. Essential presence, Lord. I, I pray that you will um, shield everyone here from from my opinion as we share the word. Lord, just help me be your mouthpiece. Um, help shield them from my opinion, but just help help them hear the truth. Because Lord, we know that the truth in the truth is freedom. And Lord, that's what we that's what we need today. And Lord, I just pray, just be with us. Uh, just open our minds and our heart. Uh, and. Uh, just be with us in this time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but sometimes my life feels a little like this. Right? Correct. Um, that's amazing. He did that in a minute. 
that clip is one minute long. Seemed like 30 minutes, right, when you watch it. Uh, but but doesn't, that, doesn't that just match our lives? Isn't that, isn't that how we might feel sometimes? Just just life just is like a straight jacket, right? I don't know about you. I have kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our time is, is just squeezing us. Our schedule is squeezing us. Family squeezing us. Church, the band squeezing us. <laughs> you know? I mean, um, and, but unfortunately, we're in good company. Unfortunately, most Christians, in the area of freedom, most Christians live defeated lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. We try, we, we uh, in the realm of freedom, we try to apply our skills, abilities, and all, you know, to free ourselves from past experiences or maybe a, a hurt that we're trying to get over or, or uh, a habit or something that we're trying to get through. We, we, we just try to give all our effort to it. And at the end of the day, we don't gain any traction. Anybody been there? Mm -hmm. uh, but God didn't intend it to, God did not intend us to live this way. God intended us to be free. Right? And today's message is what we're talking about. Free. Right? Uh, it goes all the way back in the Bible to, to Genesis. You know, Adam and Eve were free. Free to what? Well, God wants us to be free so we can worship and serve God alone, mm -hmm. with everything that we are. He doesn't want us to be hindered. And my fear today is many Christians, and I include myself, are, are, are not free. All right? And some is, is outside influence, but some is stuff that we do ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, so, how do we get this freedom um, in the middle of our lives? How do we get this freedom? from things in our lives that, that hold us, that capture us. How do we get this free? Well, I'm glad you asked. Yeah. And thankfully, we're not, the only, we're not the only people that have asked this. Mm -hmm. The people long before have asked this question. Mm -hmm. and thankfully, God, a lot of people, just to uh, pass the test of time, and we have what uh, God wants us to have. So if you have your Bibles, uh, God addressed this very issue. In John chapter 8. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn. If not, that's fine. Uh, all the scriptures, I'm reading out of the NIV Bible this morning. All the scriptures will be on the screen. Uh, and all the scripture references will be on the screen. Uh, if you'd like to follow along there, that's fine. Uh, we're looking at John chapter 8. <clears throat> and uh, a few times... Uh, Probably about a year or two ago, I, I preached on uh, out of John chapter 8 on uh, uh, the adulterous woman. Uh, about a year or two ago, which was, uh, uh, I guess, I was on second sermon for the church. <clears throat> but John chapter 8 starts out with the story of the woman called adultery. Then it moves to, uh, we kind of see this back and forth. You know, the Pharisees, they pop up. And uh, as you know, in the study of John, the Pharisees, they just, they're all over the place. And they want to get in heat debates. Challenging Jesus in his, uh, his he claims to be, uh, and even where he came from. You know, near the end you know, of chapter eight, Jesus says, you know, "I came from heaven. You know, you came from earth." And so the challenge of Jesus. So the atmosphere is pretty hostile, pretty hostile between Jesus uh, and these Jews. All right. So that's what we kind of going to uh, push off from this morning. John chapter eight. <clears throat> Start at verse 31. <clears throat> to the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said, If you hold my teachings, you're really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Look at the last part of that. The truth will set you free. Well, to be set free from something means that you're enslaved to something that you need to be free from, right? And we're going to look at that <clears throat> kind of throughout the rest. <clears throat> so, of course, uh, as the Jews, they always had a response. So they come back at Jesus in verse 33. <clears throat> then he, uh, they answered him, <clears throat> We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? 
And this morning we have two, two groups of people. We have one group that has this mindset that the Jews have. I'm not enslaved to anybody. Why do I need freedom? Why do I, need, I don't need to be set free from anything. I'm not enslaved to anything. Then we have the second group, which you'll see a little later, who knows they're enslaved to something. And that's holding them back. That's that straight jacket that's, that's squeezing you to death. <clears throat> All right? So they object. And uh, he said that, you know, there, verse 33, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. Anybody who's read the Old Testament knows how many times the Jews were enslaved. <coughs> so why would they say such a thing? Um, they, were, they were enslaved to many nations. I mean, uh, there was a list so long, I was like, well, I can't memorize all those big names and all this. I'm not that smart. So there were just a lot, maybe 10, uh, over their history that they were enslaved to. So how could they forget this? Right? Remember, they were, you know, like 70 years in, in slavery. How could, how could you forget your family history like that? We weren't enslaved. Well, most Bible scholars say what they're, what they're kind of referring to is not the physical kind of the public um, slavery, but they, they refer to the inward, kind of the inward bondage. They were saying, what, you know, well, hourly, and right now they were uh, under Roman rule, but they weren't slaves to Rome. That's a big difference. So they were under Roman rule. They said, okay, well, we're not enslaved to the Romans. Uh, and then inwardly, you know, we're not, we're not, in, you don't feel we're enslaved to anything because to a Jew, freedom was huge. You want to make a Jew mad? You talk about their freedom. Uh, that was their prized possession because uh, they went as far as to think that if you were a Jew, that you received freedom just by, by, uh, by your birthright. If you're a Jew, you're free. Uh, because the Jews, as you remember, the Jews were the descendants of Abraham. And you remember back in the Old Testament, God made a covenant with the Israelites that you will be my special people. You'll be my chosen people. So they say, all right, you know, we don't have anything there. You know, our heart's good. You know, we're a right relationship. You know, I'm a Jew. I, I get the, we're the elite. We're spiritual elite. We're good. Thanks, Jesus, for, for helping. But we're not saved to anybody. And who, you know, how can you say that we shall be suffering? Because I don't think I need to be free from anything. Right? But God looks, thankfully, God looks much deeper than that. God looks at the heart. God's looking at our heart condition right now. He was looking at their heart condition. He's like, you're missing it. You're missing it. So next we see Jesus' uh, response to their challenge, like he always did, kind of from a spiritual point of view. Right? And all throughout you see the, the New Testament, the Jews, and I mean, all the Pharisees and stuff. He, he always just kind of uh, hit it from a different angle, but they didn't see it. And so he does that here, verse 34. <clears throat> Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. So Jesus here is insisting that their soul needed to be set free. Their soul was in bondage to sin. They didn't see it. So it's interesting in that verse, look at verse 34, and uh, you see that sin is mentioned two times. Well, what is sin? In the New Testament, sin refers, sin, if you actually look it up in the original language, sin means missing the mark. So you might uh, picture uh, an archer, right? They have like a big bullseye down there, and he's pulling back his bow. He's ready to make, you know, hit in the bullseye, but he lets go of the arrow and misses the target. Well, that's what God said we've done. When we sin, we miss the target. What's the target? Perfection. The target is perfection. God's standard. God's perfection. Uh, you'll see that in, uh, and so that means we miss the mark, which that's where we get, we are, we sin, so we're a sinner. Romans 3, 23, uh, 3, 11 through 12. Uh, Paul says, There is none righteous, not even one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks for God. All, not just a few, mm -hmm. all have turned aside. Together they become useless. There is none who does good. There is not even one. Thing. Thanks, Steve. I, I came to church to be up with it. Now you tell me I'm a sinner and I'm useless and worthless. 
right? Yeah. I, I think I think here Paul really paints the picture. Uh, Romans 3.23, uh, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We, we fall short of God's perfection. Mm -hmm. He's perfect. We're not. Mm -hmm. Once again, Steve, try to keep me uplifted this morning. <laughs> Tell me not perfect. I thought I was perfect. God's worked on me a long time ago on that one. So. Uh, but in this verse, go back to verse uh, 34. In this verse, the idea when he says, uh, everyone who sins is a slave to sin, this is kind of the idea of habitual sin, continual sin. It, it's a, a life of sin. You know, this might be your life this, this morning. Uh, of course, I, you know, a lot through the Bible, just whatever is not, not God's best is sin. Whatever, uh, you know, Ten Commandments. There, there's a lot of scripture we could have went through, but uh, if God's not pleased with it, then it's sin. Uh, if it's not in His natural order of things from the beginning, it's sin. And, uh, you know, I don't know about you, but, but my sin tends to become habit for me. Mm -hmm. I get addicted, right? And I was reminded of a story. There was a radio, I don't know if you all remember a radio personality, uh, Paul Harvey. Anybody mm -hmm. hear him on the radio? Mm -hmm. Paul Harvey. Uh, but he told a story <clears throat> about how Eskimos killed wolves. You know, anybody hear that story? Mm -hmm. What they would do, the Eskimo would get a knife and he would uh, get some animal blood and he would put it on the knife and then he'd sit outside and let it freeze. And he'd get back out after it's frozen and he'd get some more blood. Put it back on there, let it freeze. Put it back on there again until the whole blade's covered, layer after layer after layer, until you couldn't see the knife anymore. All right? Then he would take the knife and go uh, out in the woods and he would stick it in the ground with the blade up. So the blade's in the ground with the with animal blood all around. <clears throat> His job's done. Now he waits. So the air's flowing through the forest or wherever, <clears throat> and a wolf smells it. And it finds the bait. When it comes across the bait, the wolf starts licking the blood off the knife. And all it tastes good. Keeps on licking, keeps on licking, keeps on licking. The wolf is so focused on the blood that it doesn't realize that he's actually cutting his tongue. And the blood he's tasting is the animal blood, but also his blood, which is draining the life out of him. So by morning, the wolf is dead. Isn't that how sin is? Sin uh, sin baits us and then it drains every ounce of life in us until we're physically and spiritually dead. Don't believe me, look at Romans 6.23. This is the uh, easy to read version. I thought this, this said it perfectly. Romans 6.23. When people sin, they earn what sin pays. Sin pays you something. Do you know that? What does it pay? Death. When people sin, when you sin, when we sin, we, we earn death. Is that, is that you this morning? Is that you this morning? Are you living that? Or are you you're not free because you're living a sinful life? Is that Jesus morning? <clears throat> now Jesus kind of, I like when he uses kind of word pictures or, or kind of analogies. Verse 35, now Jesus uses a household analogy kind of to drive on the point of what he's talking about. About these Jews being free, being set free. Because he called them a slave. <clears throat> uh, look at verse, first part of uh, verse, verse 35. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family. Stop right there. In the Roman culture, slaves were literally nobody. Uh, they had no legal right. They could be 
traded or sold to anyone at any time. And uh, the, uh, uh, the house where they, they were a slave of, uh, they didn't have any rights. Uh, they were uh, nearly a nobody to the family. Uh, and that sin is, it, it, it just, it, sin doesn't care about us as people. It just wants to use us. You can just, just, just wear us out and use us. Here Jesus is saying that all the Jews and all people who have ever sinned, in a sense, have no place in God's house. No place. Is that you this morning? But there is good news. Anybody need some good news this morning? <laughs> All right. Have I, got, have, I, have I given you a lot of bad news? Anybody, anybody just give me some good news, please? You call me all kind of names, and, you know? Let me look at verse 35. Uh, the second part of verse 35. Well, well, we'll start. Now, a slave has no permanent place in the family, but, oh man, I love the buts. Prettiest butts are in the Bible, in my opinion. <laughs> don't tweet that. Don't, don't. You know. Uh, but God. You know what? Romans uh, and Romans. But God demonstrated. But God demonstrated His love towards us. But God. But God sent us. Oh, man. So when you see a butt, you know, kind of perk your ears up. There might be something good. But a son belongs to it forever. Well, this is good. The son here, you notice it's the capital. S. Uh, or, uh, what was the, uh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm skipping ahead. I'm so excited. But the son belongs to the family. Now, a son, and back in the uh, Roman culture, uh, a son had a lot of privileges. He had all the privileges of the family. Uh, his stance, he was secure. He had a place to, he even remember the prodigal son. You know, his, man, whoo, what a powerful, I'm going to preach on that one day. Uh, what a powerful image, if you understand the culture. Uh, but the father still took back the son. Because why? The son always has a secure, permanent place in the family. And that's what, that's what God is trying to, trying to illustrate for us. Uh, now look at verse 36. It, this, is, this is huge. So if. So if the son, capital S, Different than lowercase, lowercase says. The Son. He's talking to Jesus. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Amen. Amen. Now, I, you know, I grew up you know, around church, and we've heard that a lot. To be honest with you, I, 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 we take that verse for granted. Mm -hmm. We don't understand what it means. We haven't personalized it. We'll do that here in a second. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. You might need to be free this morning. Mm -hmm. Uh, so as a son of God, Jesus, well, and also as a son, the son, all oh, this is Jesus, the son had the privilege and the power and authority of letting slaves go free. You might need to be set free. The son had the power and authority to let the slave go free. But also, he also had the authority once the slave is free. The slave could come back into the family. We're talking about God's family. This is what is history. That's good. So let's let's do this because sometimes we read scripture and it's really hard for us to personalize this. So I thought let's do an exercise. Uh, but first, before we get to our well, let's see. yeah. Uh, you go ahead, throw up that. The next slide. Let's personalize this. Now, now I left a blank. We're going to read this verse out loud together in a second. And I left a blank where the word used to say you. And sometimes we read, you know, the son said, the son said you free, you free indeed. Okay, but we don't personalize it. Whenever you see you in the Bible, put your name in there. Always look at the context, especially in the New Testament. Put your name in there. It might really change the meaning of it. And for somebody in this room, we're going to read this verse, and it's going to click this morning. And that's what I've been excited about for uh, the past month. Uh, I've been praying for everybody here uh, that the light comes on. All right. So let's personalize this now. We're going to read it semi-slow, but 
when we get to where it says, insert your name, insert your name, not your neighbors. Right? This is a sermon for you. Right? You know, I, I know what you're thinking. I know some somebody, so and so needs to hear this. <laughs> I don't need this. I, I, I've, I've done it. Right? This is for you. And so it's, when we get to insert your name, once you say your name, all right. All right. Let's say it together. So if the sun sets Stephen free, Stephen will be free indeed. Let's say that one more time. That, that's good news. Good news. Say it one more time. If the sun sets Stephen free, Stephen will be free indeed. See, the main point of all of this, I want you to walk away with, and you can put it up front, is that Jesus sets the captives free. Amen. Let's say that out loud together. Jesus, Jesus sets, sets the captives free. free. It's about, talking about me and you in the lost world. <coughs> say it one more time. Jesus, Jesus sets, sets the captives free. free. Uh, and there's, there's a few scriptures which you might want to write these down. These are really powerful scriptures. <clears throat> uh, maybe if, if <clears throat> you know, now or in, in the future, you kind of find yourself just kind of just feeling just, just you lost your freedom with life, family, just just whatever it is. You, you need some freedom. Go back to some of these verses. <coughs> Romans 8, 1 and 2. <clears throat> and this is good. This is good. <clears throat> Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So if you're in Christ, no one's condemning you. <clears throat> Why do we condemn ourselves then? Do you know you talk more bad about yourself than probably anybody ever would? Why do we do that? Why do I do that? Is it really you condemning yourself? That's a, we, that's a whole other theological discussion. Do you refer to yourself as you or do you refer to yourself as I? So there's no condemnation. If, if Christ <coughs> doesn't condemn you, why do we condemn ourselves and why do we condemn others? There's no reason. Because we're free. Uh, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ, Jesus has set you free from the law of sin not only that, and of death. <coughs> so we're free from the law of sin and death. Galatians 5 1, it was for freedom. The whole purpose was this it was for freedom. That, that's the purpose that Christ sets us free. That's the reason he came. For freedom. Therefore, keep standing firm and don't be the subject again to a yoke of slavery. 2 Corinthians 3.17 Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So kind of in this brief, brief passage, and kind of this time we spent together, we've seen that everyone is born a slave to sin. Mm -hmm. But, through the cross, Jesus has set the captives free. Jesus has set us free. Because he has the authority and power to. So, all right, that's great Bible study, great information. Yeah. So what? What do I do with this? How can I apply this in my life today? Well, you know, if anybody, you can go ahead and close your Bible. This is kind of where we're going to bring the, the plane in for landing. Uh, but there's just one question I want to ask. And uh, don't be thinking about what someone's going to do with this question, you know. And um, we'll go ahead, uh, we get some, get some background music. Go ahead, everybody, to go ahead and close your Bibles, and, and I want us to close our eyes. Because usually if we don't close our eyes, we're looking at somebody else, or we're thinking about somebody else that really needs to, just to apply to you. We need to take some time for ourselves, even in the church. I think we, uh, we're so others-focused that, that we don't. Think about ourselves. I mean, this is a message just for you. So there's one question. How can this, this idea that Jesus sets the captives free, how can this intersect your life? Well, I just want you to think about this one question. And this is it. 
ask yourself this one question. Am I spiritually free today? Am I spiritually free today? In a, in a group this size, there's, uh, statistically, there's, a, there's at least one person who, one, or, or maybe there could be a handful who, <clears throat> who, who can't say that they're spiritually free today. When I say spiritually free, I mean, is there a point in your life when Jesus Christ personally set you free from your sin? If not, that's okay. That's fine. We're glad you're here. And we'd love, we'd love to talk to you about that. On how you can be set free. You know, a lot of us here have, have walked the, the road before we were lost. That's, that's a tough life. That's hard. We don't wish that on anybody. But you can have freedom today. Are you spiritually set free? Believer, what can you let go of today? Maybe it's your family, friends, maybe some with your job. Maybe it's a hidden sin. What is it today? What's one thing you can let go of today? What's one thing you can you can leave here lighter about by coming down? Kneeling, leaving it on the altar. Or right there, just 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 confess it before God. What, what's that one thing? What's that heavy? What's the heaviest thing? Not the lightest thing. What's the heaviest thing? It's just been wearing you out. You can't sleep. You can't eat. What is it? See, the Jews thought they they were alright. That they weren't in bondage, but but thank God that He looks deeper than the skin. He looks at the heart. Their heart was in bondage. Their heart wasn't free. wasn't free to love. wasn't free to serve God. Today, what will you give over to God so you can make the freedom that He wants to give you? Satan is, oh, he's working overtime. Not that thing. No, that's going to that's gonna, that's gonna cost you too much. That's going to hurt. I know this room that uh, there's a lot of people from, uh, that came from uh, a church split. Sour relationships there. We view them as the enemy. No, they're not. What Satan wants you, want you to think of. So you view them as. No. Brothers and sisters in Christ. What's that one thing? Have you given it all to him? Or just a little bit? That's what Satan wants you to do. You remember, like the, uh, the illustration of, of the wolf, he just kept on. Just He didn't know he was, he was licking the life. He was draining the life. The problem with the church today is there's defeated Christians because they're not claiming the freedom that is theirs to claim. That Christ died for on the cross. And he purchased with his blood. What you claim today? It's time. It's time for you.
give over our sin to God. If every day we claim freedom, what would our church look like? How would we look different than the world? How about your family? What would your, what would your family look like? The structure there. How would the, how would the relationship flow much easier? You gave the other person freedom just to be themselves. Instead of picking at them and just, you know, just love them. Give them the freedom to be themselves. Accept them who they are. How would the world be impacted? Imagine how the world would be impacted if Christians decided not to love their sin, but love freedom more than their sin. Why? So they can love God and they can serve others. Because that's the Great Commission. Right. Let me close this in prayer. You bow your hands with me. Lord, this is, boy, this is a hard truth. Man, I, I was just comfortable just, just doing my own thing. I was comfortable in my straight jacket, Lord. I got used to it. It was tight, but you know, I, you know, that's that's just how life is. That's just how life is. You know, I just have to deal with it. No, Lord, thank you that the Son is set free. It's free indeed. Thank you, Lord, that we can claim that free now and eternally. Because, Lord, on the cross, Lord, we rejoice on the cross that you set us free from sin, from death, from Satan. Lord, we just praise you. Lord, just help us to, to live as free people. It's different. People will notice. And so, Lord, we just we just praise you that, that, that you sent your son, that we can be free. And, Lord, just help us leave as free people. Uh, but not only, to, only that, but also to help us to embrace this message that the son that Jesus has set the captives free. Help us share that with other people that, that might be in bondage to their sin. Who needs freedom also. Help us share that freedom with them. And we love all this stuff in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all for coming. Hope you have a blessed day.